Right, hi, grade sevens, and welcome to today's um, geography lesson. Um, we have a lesson now last week due to the fact it was youth there on um, past Tuesday on the 16th. So before we carry on as per usual, here's the memorandum for the previous lesson's activity. So if you page back in your book, um, most of your teachers would have covered this for you, or sorry, with you rather. Um, so here's activity 2.2's answers. So for number one, I wanted the three sketches. The main thing we look at as teachers are the arrows and the crust. And then for number two, as your, um, we had to fit the term with the line and so, or the definition rather, or um, the column question, just noted that number three and H, you had to use the letter D twice there. Right, moving on. We're going to focus today on volcanoes and what's very lovely about this term's geography work is that everything is builds up from what we learned the previous week. So we first started with the structure of the earth, then we focus on the crust, thereafter we focus on tectonic plates and today we're doing volcanoes. So if you look here, um, I'll get to the terminology shortly, if you look at this black lining work, it refers to all the boundary lines or where two plates or more um, meet, right? And where plates meet, we've discussed now that's where divergence, convergence and transformation occurs when plates move. But when these plates move and cause friction, high pressure is released and that's where volcanoes basically occur. So these red dots on the um, map indicate active volcanoes. So you'll see it's more predominantly wherever there are um, boundary lines. There are some odd ones here and there, but it's more predominant or along the boundary line. Right, so the terminology for this week is vents. Vents refer to holes in rocks through which magma flows and fissures. Fissures refer to the cracks um, in rock through which magma flows. So even though it sounds very much the same, vents refer to the holes and fissures refer to the cracks. Um, if we go back to this map, I just want to point out because this is a question in your activity about the ring of fire. Um, you can be examined and asked, oh, apologies for that. You can be examined and asked, what, is the, what do we mean by the ring of fire? So if we look there, it's uh, where the Eurasian, sorry, Eurasian and North American plate meets the Pacific plate. Um, there's a very high probability of volcanoes surrounded around and making it a very vulnerable point for um, volcanic eruptions because these plates are well known for their constant movement and friction. And Ring of Fire also gives you the feeling of danger along with obviously um, volcanic eruptions, there's a high chance and high probability of damage also being taken place. Moving on, why volcanoes occur? So again, just a summary of what's in your book. Volcanic eruptions are among the Earth's most powerful and destructive forces. When it's hot in the mantle, some rocks then melt and become a thick flowing substance that we know as magma. So this heat and pressure is building up in your mantle, which we know is the layer beneath the crust. So some of the magma then pushes through the vents and fissures in the Earth's surface. And that's when a volcanic eruption occurs. So this high pressure, remember heat, is always going to expand and then cause pressure upon the other layers. So the moment this escapes out, it's known as a volcanic eruption. Now, when the magma is still in the mantle, it's known as um, magma, sorry. So if you want to just dumb it down and make it much simpler to understand, if it's still in the earth and I can't see it, it's magma. When it's outside and it's running, it's lava. So just know the difference. So we don't speak of the lava underneath the crust. We speak of the magma underneath the crust. The moment when it's erupted and outside, we call it lava. So just beneath that orange block, in violent explosions, magma blasts into air and breaks into pieces. And these are volcanic bombs. So it's not only the flowing lava that becomes a problem. It's the molten rock and fire that shoots out that also causes havoc. So molten lava can cause immense damage if in a populated area. So here are just some odd pictures of volcanoes. When we do our revision for geography, I'll show you lots of visuals and videos of um, volcanoes. Apologies for notification. 
So we will go through that as well. Then very important, you are required to be able to label the sketch and draw the sketch. So if you can do both and you're sorted. So let's just start here from within the crust layer. So here's the magma chamber. So it's the place in which the magma is held. Remember, we don't refer to this as lava. Right. If we look here, so obviously this is now, this part here is where we see the outside of the volcano, almost like the hill, um, mountainous hill building upwards. Right. So if you look at this main channel going upward, this is called the main vent. Right. The moment it comes upward, it makes a mouth that's known as the crater. Okay. Out of the crater, we have lava that flows out. So this is all known as the magma. It's only when it's outside of the crater or a opening or cone that we call it lava. So this lava that's flowing out, flowing out refers to the lava flow. If we go to the next heading, this big cloud above is known as the ash cloud. And here with these uh, secondary smoke and um, rocks hitting off, we call that the pyroclastic flow. It's like a secondary flow of poisonous gas that comes off from the lava. Right, if we go to the left, you'll see there's a second, um, I'll call it a you know, secondary vent coming out. You'll see that the main vent is also known as the primary vent, will be much larger than the secondary vent. Secondary vents occur where there's too much pressure or so, or then is it where there is an additional fish, uh, sorry, fissure or um, vent in a volcano. So if you look here, it's like a secondary opening, so it's much smaller, which makes a secondary cone, not another volcano. And obviously this will also leave out lava, but it won't be as prominent as the main vent with the crater. Right. So just a little fun fact, it's screenshotted from your textbook. Um, so you can read that through if you want to, it's not too important. But then looking at today's activity, you're required to read page 26 to 27. Um, and then as always, before we start a new activity, at the stop, top of new page, you can copy down that heading for me to just today's date. Activity 2.3, discuss volcanoes, page 27, rule off. Um, you'll see your activity, especially those that managed to complete their work during the lockdown period, there are questions that are the same, um, but I have tried my best to add in revision and additional questions during this time, because I feel if you know the work twice as much, you can do twice as well. So see that as your line of motivation, if you will. Once you're done with the activity, you can rule off. All right, and that's the end of our presentation.